Round 7 of the London Chess Classics, the game today, the one game that everybody looked at was the game between Hikaru Nakamura against Maxime Vyshilograv. And the interesting thing about this game is that Nakamura repeated the same line that he lost with against Fabiano Corana in a video I analyzed previously. He repeated the same line with the white piece. So let's see what happened here. And the line we're talking about is this razor sharp knight of line. So let's go through this pretty quickly. This is the Sicilian, this is this knight of line, a6, bishop g5. 6 bishop g5 considered to be a sharpest reply to the knight of. And now we have this delayed poison pawn variation, as I like to call it. Well, white goes a3, stopping queen takes b2, because then white goes knight a4, trapping the queen. So what they do here, just continue development. And both sides develop naturally. And all of this has been seen in round 6, in which Karana was playing with the white piece against Nakamura with black. But at this point, here, Maxime, or let's call him MVL for the sake of simplicity, he deviated from Nakamura's game. Nakamura played g5 and really didn't stand a chance against Karana, who was very well prepared. So instead here, Maxime played bishop b7. Of course, a move that Nakamura also considered. I mean, those are the two moves that black can play. Bishop g2. And now rook c8, to my mind, might be an inaccuracy, but honestly, not sure what's up with this whole variation right now. Anyway, it seems that black's under some pressure. g5 is the alternative, but also then f5 is a move, h4 is a move. This whole line seems crazy dangerous for black. So after rook c8, King b1, king b1 is a move often useful anyway in a lot of the Sicilian positions because king is just better placed here than on c1. And now g5, in fact. And queen h3. And this apparently was a surprise to Maxime, which is a surprise to me because I actually looked at this position yesterday and Queen h3 is, is the first move that's giving out, given out pretty much by computer, I believe. I mean, there's also h4, but queen h3 is definitely one move you need to check. And Maxime here, he played knight c5. That is certainly not the best move. Uh, but a position, from a practical point of view, is difficult to play anyway. Uh, g takes f4, here we see the whole idea. And then white goes g5, pushes this knight away, and if the knight moves then well, it doesn't take but goes g6 and suddenly this pawn e6 becomes just weak and the black position will collapse because in all these lines you have to remember the black king is in the center the white king is fairly safe on the queen side but the black king is in the center and whenever a position opens up whether that's through a pawn sacrifice piece sacrifice then you need to worry as black so let's see what happened. Knight c5, attacking upon an e4. But white just plays very naturally. Rook hg1, the last piece, is joining the action. And the rook is just perfectly placed here. You can see how it already aims against the black king. And now h5. All right. So this position is just fire on board here. Okay. And now... Nakamura unleashes a truly amazing move. It is a typical Sasson sacrifice, but still to make this move requires quite some courage. And Nakamura, in the press conference, he said, well, I wasn't sure about all the lines, but I want to have some fun. And I didn't see any lines that were losing for me, so let's go for it. And he went knight f5. Great peace sacrifice here which is so typical in the, in the Sicilian in general, not just in a knight of that you sacrifice a knight on f5 or d5 or e6, all of these sacrifice or b5, black always has to be aware of. And here, this is just working out beautifully. Let's go through some lines. 
MVL played knight c takes e4. Let's first consider what happens if black accepts the peace sacrifice. e takes f5, no e takes f5, that's the whole idea. The rook is opened up on the e-file against the black king. And it's very curious with the pawns here on the king side, but it all just works out very well for white. For example, if bishop takes g2 here, then queen takes, and now g takes f4 is answered by g5. Rook g8, and here probably several ways to play for white, but one way is rook takes e7, and king takes e7. Now white can take an f6 with check, and if queen takes, rook e1 is pinning the queen. And while white is not winning the queen yet because of knight e6, his position is f clearly superior here. Another move to consider in this position instead of bishop takes g2 is simply knight takes g4. That makes sense, right? Just take this pawn. But this leaves this very crucial square unattended on d5. And white can just go bishop takes c5. And now go with the knight to d5. And black cannot defend the bishop on e7 anymore. White will regain the piece and also continuous attack. Great prospects for white. Another move I would like to mention here, besides knight c takes e4, which Maxime played, is g takes f4. And here white can go bishop takes c5. And after queen takes c5, there's knight takes e7. And here we see the whole point. Why is white doing this? Because here you can play e5 and if now bishop takes g2, there's the intermediate taking on f6 with check and white remains a piece up but actually the line still continues here black can go h takes g4 e takes f6 check king e7 and the pawn is after queen takes g4 there's rook g8 attacking the queen and also attacking the bishop on g2 if the white queen moves then black regains a piece so what it needs to do here is queen takes g8 give up the queen and white has a rook and two minor pieces for the queen and is clearly better or maybe even winning but to my mind this seemed like a, a good chance for black uh, to go for this because this is not that clear and still seems pretty difficult to play for both sides though obviously so let's return to the game knight c takes e4 now the path was fairly clear for white in the next few moves Bishop takes e4, knight takes e4. Now, not knight takes e4. That's important because that was the whole point of MVL's move. Then black would take on c2, take on e4, and doing absolutely fine. The key point or the key move is here to go bishop d4, which is on the one hand a defensive move, defending the knight on c3. And of course, also the bishop is just perfectly placed here, attacking the rook on h8. Now here MVL went rook g8. Let's consider some other moves. What if knight takes c3, bishop takes c3 and now just taking the knight. I mean you always have to consider that and also look at these pawns. It's just curious. And here in fact not taking on h8 when it's really not that clear since black will take on g4. But white can just calmly recapture on f5 and threatens to take on h8 still in the next move as well as this move f6 and black is lost another move is what happens if black takes on f5 immediately well now white can take the rook on h8 there are no checks on c2 but so you need to check those lines as well as knight f2 i mean this is all easy for me more or less to figure out when i analyze the game of the computer but imagine how difficult it is to run through all these lines while you're playing and you don't know the variation of the position you don't know what's going on you just try to find your way through the variation jungle here white is also winning or clearly better if the knight takes d1 now not even take on d1 i mean i guess that would be possible too but g takes f5 is even stronger and here f6 once again is coming while it regains the piece continues his attack and is winning beautiful variations maxime went rook g8 
Makes sense, right? The rook was attacked. Let's move it. And now knight takes e7. The king has to retake because the queen still needs to keep an eye on this pawn on c2. So king takes. Now just g takes h5. Simple move, but strong move by Nakamura, who just, up to this point, he just played perfect chess. Every move, the best move. That's very impressive. Um, the point here is that the bishop is so well placed and is supporting the march of the h pawn. h6, h7 is very simple and very strong threat at the same time. Now, Maxime took on f4, and that is the best try. Here, h6 is possible and good, but queen h4 as well, very strong move. The king drops back to f8, and now this was a critical moment. Here, Nakamura spent a a lot of time and his position is winning but still not that simple and he played a very nice move I think the move king a1 just a, a gorgeous move because the position has been crazy the whole time sacrifices taking pieces and now you just play a calm king move, really, but it's a great move. However, it would have been even greater if he played this move a few two moves later. If first he played h6, threatening h7, so e5 is the only move can play, h7, rook h8, and now king a1 would have been a true killer here. What is the point anyway? Well, the point is you want to take on e4 without black being able to take on c2 with check. And this is just this is just completely game over now. If black takes on d4, knight takes e4, I mean, we don't have to look at this, obviously, as the black king is completely open and the pawn structure is a mess. And if knight takes c3, just bishop takes c3, and queen h6, queen f6, rook takes d6, all these moves are in the position. The black position is just collapsing as well. And um, if queen e7, which is actually a good try in the game, we'll see this. Now the difference is compared to the game where the pawn is still on h5, here what well, can give a check, obviously, and then just take on an e4. And here, black might <laughs> tree dream to, to hold this somehow, but even here, what well, can just... Tch. Bishop takes e5, and uh, it's all collapsing, queen g6. And the, the rooks and the queen and this pass pawn on h7. It's just too much. White will win here. But I'm sure there are many ways for white to win. So king a1, very cute move. I'm not sure if cute is the right expression. But ingenious move. Just not at the perfect moment in time. Still, white is clearly better. But it allows black to get back into the game. However... MVL misses his chance. He goes b4 and then his position is clearly lost again. The move to play was queen e7. Great move. The pawn is white doesn't want to exchange queen c. Yes, he wins a piece, but <laughs> on the other hand, black has defended. No more king attack. And now he has those four pawns in the center, which definitely give him compensation for the piece. And position is completely unclear again. So instead, at this point, what would need to take an f4, but now black can play queen g5 and forcing a queen trade here. White should go rook takes e4, and now queen takes f4, rook takes f4, and black regains a piece of e5, and we get to this position in which white is up a pawn, obviously, and has clearly better position, but black can fight and uh, still has hope definitely to hold this somehow that was by far the best chance of black so b4 what is going on well mvl is just trying to to get to the to white king to open the white king somehow and to open some files I mean, if white was to take now, then black would probably go e5. And now you see the difference that in some of these lines, there is a perpetual check uh, threat. So that was the point, the idea. 
which is a nice idea that just fails due to various reasons. Nakamura played knight takes e4, that's a good move, and it's winning. Even stronger once again would have been to just play h6, completely ignore what black is doing there. On the queen side, just go h6, go h7, simple chess, well, simple for me to say, but this is very clear. Um, b takes c3, I mean, what else? But h7, c takes b2, just bishop takes b2, take on g8, next move, game over. And is there anything else that black can do? I mean, I understand you need to check some lines here. And this looks scary, but it seems king takes b2. Yeah, just king takes b2 and knight takes c3. Uh, I'll just take on g8. There's no check here. No way for black to save the rook. That's it. Yeah. All right. Well, knight takes e4 also wins. But it gets messy. It definitely gets messy now. Bishop takes e4, rook takes, queen takes c2, double attack, rook e1. And that was the whole point here of uh, Maxime. He wanted to open up the black king, create some chance. Here he played b takes a3. Another interesting move is rook g2. When what well, needs to play queen takes f4, e5, queen h6 check, king g8, and now rook c1. Queen f5, and here you could go bishop f2, which is a really nice move, but I think it's better to play simple to go rook takes c8 and go rook c1, queen f5, and now here well, it has a good move available, which is queen. Oh, excuse me. I, I'm not queen f5 here. But a queen f5, black can, white can also play something else. But queen f8 is a, is a good try because in the end game it's always not that clear. There's not that much material left. So you would need to find this move here, queen e3. And the point is, white is keeping his extra piece since after e takes c4 is queen h3, double attack, queen takes g2 and rook c8 and white wins. So back to the game, that was the variation rook g2. Now b takes a3 is what MVL played. And now Nakamura went queen takes f4. a takes b2, bishop takes b2 and rook g5. Very nice move. Bringing this rook into a game. Threatening rook a5 followed by checkmate right now. And white cannot take because there's a perpetual that would save black. So... Nakamura played queen takes d6 and he had seen this move coming, rook g5. And he knew what he was going to do. Queen takes d6. Now king goes to g8. Notice that king e8. White can just take on e6. And play rook f1 and wins. So king g8. Now rook g1, and here MVL played queen a4 check. Now bishop a3. Also queen a3 is possible. You could also go for this, because this endgame would be winning for white uh, with his two h-pawns. That should be sufficient. But Nakamura played bishop a3, and here actually, I think maybe a move that, well... Definitely MVL missed, and maybe Nakamura miss, missed as well. Black could have still kept fighting. Uh, MVL played rook takes g1, then it's just over. There, there is an ingenious move, and it's kind of funny in a way, because earlier we saw this ingenious king move by white, and here black could have mirrored this and played an ingenious king move himself. King h7, that's just amazing. Just leave this rook hanging on g5. So what's the whole point? After rook takes g5, black goes rook d8. Rook d8. And now obviously white shouldn't take because that would lead to a perpetual right away. So white would need to give his queen and play a move like queen. I mean, there are many ways to play here, but 
one move would be queen d3 check rook takes d3 and rook takes d3 and yes white is winning but yes you can probably also see that this will still require some technical accuracy and the game is not over black is still keep on fighting i mean on all these lines the white king is completely open and white always has to make sure there are no perpetuals and this is still a fight so king h7 was the way to go i should also point out white doesn't have to take on g5 could also go queen d3 check here but then black goes rook f5 and still game is not over the game was over after rook takes g1 because here the black king is weaker than the white king and white is just going for the mating attack here. Queen e3 check. Now king h6 was played. If f5 the queen just retreats to d6. Black doesn't have any checks and the queen is coming in intruding and winning. So king h6. Now rook g6 check cannot be taken. Just queen takes g6 checkmate. So king takes h5 and now the rook just drops back to g1. Still, black doesn't have any checks and look at this king on h5. Very sad. Queen h7 is the current checkmate threat. So MVL played f5 when after queen h3 he would still have queen h4. But Nakamura does it smarter. He just goes queen f3 check first and here MVL resigned because after king h6 now queen h3 and if queen h4 white can just take and if king h4 then well there's a check me on g5 so in this position to keep on playing black would need to give his queen but obviously they don't need to play this anymore and this is game over so a fantastic game and what a great comeback from Nakamura as well. You have to consider yesterday he was crushed in this exact same line of the knight of the black pieces and now he plays it with the white piece. I mean this is very brave. Um, and he wins in style. He finds this beautiful sacrifice with knight f5 and plays in a fantastic game and I don't know about you guys but I would love to see more knight of games. This has just been a lot of fun. If, if you haven't seen the, the other game, Karana against Nakamura, I definitely recommend you check it out as well. So I hope you enjoyed this analysis. Let me know if anything was unclear in the comments and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.